Hi guys. So this week I want to talk to you about sort of a dilemma or a situation I guess we've all probably experienced and that is that somewhere in our collection most of us have got these sort of models we just don't really know what to do with. Uh, they're usually old or you know we don't know who made them or where they came from, they're missing parts, they just don't generally fit with everything else in our collection and so they sort of get banished to this figure no man's land and you know languish there. I think that's kind of sad but you know I also see it as kind of an opportunity. So this model here is kind of one of that sort from my box of stuff. It's an undead skeleton model. I really don't know who made it or where it came from. I think I got Via Via a friend in America, but I'm really just not entirely sure. Um, underneath the base coat, it's actually made of a different kind of metal than most Wargaming figures. I think it's pewter. It definitely looks different. Uh, you can see the sculpting on it is much cruder, heavier. It's kind of a more, I guess I want to say, naive style, uh, old-fashioned really, than what I usually do. Uh, I think it may have actually been intended for more role-playing or Dungeons and Dragons type stuff than it was for sort of like large-scale wargaming. And so yeah, this model is not like something I usually paint and it's not very great, but I like stuff like this now and then because I think it represents um, a good challenge for you as a painter because, you know, if you want to take like something like this um, and really try to make it look good, you're really only going to be relying on your kind of own skills to do that. Uh, most models, you know, from Warlord or Foundry or Perry, any of the major manufacturers that make pretty good quality figures, um, you're going to be greatly helped by the quality of the sculpting. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've seen people who <laughs> take those and make them look terrible with a bad paint job. But in general, the sort of underlying quality of the figures is going to mean that you get a better result. But with something like this, you're only going to get a good result if your skill as a painter, you know, is, kind of transforms the figure into something uh, more than it was originally. So I think this is an exercise that I think we can all do from time to time. It's a good use for these kind of random, old, weird figures that you just don't think look very good. And that's just to take them and, you know, try your best to just get, or just try to get your absolute best results from them, you know, even though you're working with a lot of limitations. And I mean, I'm not saying you should do this all the time, but it's really a good challenge to see where you are as a painter, to see if you can take one of these ugly duckling figures, I guess, I guess as we're going to call them, and, you know, transform it into a swan. So to start off with, here are all the colors I used to paint the skeleton. Though I didn't plan it that way, I really like how it turned out that the palette consisted entirely of just neutral colors. First of all, I'm going to start out by base coating the skeleton. I'm using Vallejo Khaki Gray for this purpose. Um, because you're working over black, you're probably going to need to apply a couple of coats just to make sure that you get coverage because you don't want any of that sort of black base coat really showing through here. Next, in order to help add definition to the bones, I am going to apply a really nice heavy wash of Citadel Agrax Earthshade all over the skeleton. And you can just let this dry naturally, or if you want to speed things up, you can run it under a hair dryer really quickly. Now my first highlight on the skeleton here is going to be a mixture of the khaki gray with some Vallejo buff. And I've gone about 50-50. You can kind of see there in the background what the color looks like. This layer is really, really important for the model overall because we're going to really be using it to define the structure of the skeleton. Now, if we were dealing with maybe a better sculpted model, uh, something from, say, Games Workshop or whatever, uh, you would see that the bones and the sculpting of the bones and the skeleton bead would be really clear and really sharp and you know exactly where to paint. But that's really not the case here. It's kind of messy, especially in some areas. And, and it can be, you know, you have to really 
put in some effort with the paint to really show what you want to show. And that's one reason that we started out with such a dark base coat and such a wash so that it can really have a, a, a strong contrast between the surface of the bones and sort of the area down in between. So I recommend when you do this that you get a picture of a skeleton to look at so that you kind of uh, place the bones in the right place so you know what you're doing. I mean, I'm not going to say the sculpting didn't help at all here. It definitely did give me some guidance about where to paint, but I still found I really needed a picture to help me sort of just work out where things go. And this is really going to be the most labor intensive process, this, because it, you have to carefully just plot out all the separate areas you're going to paint and make sure you leave sort of lines down in between them. But, you know, just take your time, you know, be careful and, you know, look at an example as you work to make sure you get the right results. And once you've gone in and generally defined all the bones in the skeleton, you can go back over some of the areas if you want and just sort of brighten up the color, uh, make it more intense where you, you know, feel like it should be. For my next step here, I've taken some Vallejo German Camouflage Brown, and I'm going to be using that mostly to add definition to the skull. Um, on the rest of the skeleton, I feel like that dark base coat was good enough for sort of defining the sort of cracks between the bones, but on the skull, I want to sort of, I don't know, I want to add a little bit of extra. So I'm using this to do things like paint in the eye sockets and the nose and, you know, inside the jaw and that sort of thing. And you know, this is on this model that proved to be particularly important, just because this the skull here is not very well sculpted. It's not in good proportion. Uh, it, it's not really anatomically correct in a whole lot of ways. So this is more than on the rest of the model. I really had to use paint here to try to correct some of the problems that I had, like making the, the eye sockets the right size and the jaw have enough open you know, sort of area in it and the nose that big enough and I ha actually fiddled around with this quite a bit to try to get sort of the right balance and it took me a while before I was totally satisfied with it. My next uh, layer is another overall highlight and what I've done here is I've taken Vallejo Ivory which is just a slightly yellowish off-white and I've used it to sort of uh, further lighten that color that I was using in the last step. And you can see I'm going to start really applying that to the skeleton in various areas just to add highlights. Uh, I'm really, as you can see, focusing on areas where light would hit like I always do and kind of pulling out from there. Like you can see the tops of his feet, those bones around his knees on the tops of the arm bones. And of course you're going to be doing a lot of this on the skull. The next highlight layer I'm adding here is going to be just pure ivory and I thinned it down pretty considerably here and that's so I can apply it in several layers and build up extra tones. And I'm really going back over the same areas that I hit before, uh, just adding more emphasis to those areas where I want light to be hitting. Usually when I'm painting these bones I try to focus really on the sort of the centers of them more and then have it sort of get slightly darker towards the sides if you can manage that. That adds a sort of extra dimensionality to them because you know they're going to be a lot more 3D than I can perhaps make them look on this model really. For my next layer I just took pure white and I did 
pretty much what I was just already doing. I do want to say something at this point a little bit about the skull because it was the most problematic area on this model in terms of the sculpting, as I kind of mentioned before. And uh, after I finished this last highlight layer with the white, sort of building it up, I then went back in with some of the darker base colors like the khaki gray and the buff to sort of help define it better, which you'll see a lot more in the next step. I didn't really show all of that because I was just kind of messing around and I wasn't even quite sure what I was trying to do. But in the end, it was helpful because I was able to add some sort of shadows and contouring to that skeleton's skull that really weren't there in the skull but were really necessary and i also was able the eyes on the skeleton are really too high it doesn't have a big enough forehead so i was able to sort of using paint i was able to reduce that down a little bit and i also sort of painted on the suggestion of some brow bones uh which maybe are not realistic but it makes actually the skeleton look a little bit more evil and grimacing as you will see in a little bit so yeah, that's kind of the finished result on the skull. It's still not perfect, but I think it looks a lot better. And now I've moved on to painting his shield. Uh, there's some wood showing, which I'm base coating here using Vallejo Chocolate Brown. And then I'm at the same time going to just paint the fabric cover or whatever it is, just with a base coat to start it off with at least of Vallejo Black. Next, I'm going to highlight that wood. So in order to do that, I'm using the khaki gray that I already had out, and I'm going to mix a bit of that into my chocolate brown, and I'm just going to start picking out the individual boards and planks and such, which were fortunately very well sculpted in this model, so I didn't have much trouble there. Uh, and then you can also see that there's some rips in the fabric on the front, and you're also going to want to make sure you get the wood there. Uh, then I just went in again, this time with just pure khaki gray, and I just continued defining and highlighting the edges of those boards there where they show a little bit more. My final step was then to take some um, of the buff, which again I already had out, and I mixed that in just to get a kind of a really light shade, and I used that sort of as a very thin edge highlight just where I thought sort of boards be began and ended. And I also tried to focus my highlighting more towards the sort of the top part of the shield and made it get it look a little bit darker and more shadowed towards the bottom. After I finished, I kind of felt like it looked okay, but I felt like the wood needed a little bit more unification because it was kind of bleached out in some places. So then I just went over all the wood areas with kind of a nice sort of even Agrax Earthshade wash, which just helped to honestly pull everything together. Next, I worked on highlighting the shield cover, which I decided I would leave black. So after uh, cleaning up a little bit, because I got a bit of brown paint around when I was painting the wood, uh, I then went in with a German gray and I started highlighting. And like, as I do with shields normally, I sort of take this lighter color and I apply it towards the top and then I sort of drag it out as I go downward. Basically what you wanna do is apply that lighter paint most of the way on the shield and then sort of you know, three quarters of the way halfway down. Then I went ahead and got a good bit of, a fair amount of water on my brush and I started blending it out into the darker shade. I then continued highlighting by uh, just taking some white and mixing a very small amount of it into the German gray. Uh, and I applied sort of a first layer like that. I'm repeating the process from before with the German gray. I apply it sort of, uh, some way down the shield and then I sort of drag it out with water into the color that I applied before. I think I applied, including the German gray, probably uh, three highlights this way and I just made sure the, the steps between them were very subtle. Then when I finished, uh, I went back in with an even lighter gray shade and I used that to sort of edge highlight some of the tears and rips on the surface, which is just a really fun detail. It really make everything pop and look really nice. I uh, always made sure that I edge highlight only sort of along the bottom edges of those rips because I sort of imagine light coming down from the top. So you're gonna get a highlight sort of where it's hitting up sort of when it comes downward. So the, and then where sort of the top edge of those rips is just gonna stay dark. <laughs> Now 
Next, I'm painting the grips on the back of the shield. I wanted these to just be leather, but I wanted to get a different tone in here. So uh, I base coated them first using the German camouflage black brown. Then I went ahead and did a pretty general highlight of chocolate brown, which is how I start with most leather, but here, and then after that, I kind of went a little different. I took some Vallejo saddle brown and mixed it into the chocolate brown. And I sort of uh, lightly highlighted over it again with that and then I finished off with just uh, sort of a light dabbing of uh, the saddle brown just by itself and I did that mostly sort of along the edges. Now I'm going to base coat the metal areas which include his chainmail shirt and his pretty much his entire sword. I just went ahead and took uh, German gray here and I took a little bit of Vallejo Air gun metal and I mix it in there so that it would get kind of a slight metallic sheen to it. I then applied a really subtle highlight by taking and mixing just a bit more gun gray into that base color so it got a little shinier a little bit more metallic and i'm going to use that to lightly sort of highlight the sword and i'm going to kind of overbrush it on his uh, chain mail sort of shirt and you know overbrushing of course is putting paint on your brush kind of wiping off some, a lot of it on your palette and then very sort of lightly running the brush over the surface I then continued highlighting with just pure Vallejo Air gunmetal. On the sword, I'm kind of really using this kind of as an edge highlight. You can see I applied along those kind of edges and then I sort of uh, blend it inward so that it sort of fades out. I don't want this sword to get too shiny or, you know, you know, vibrant looking like you'd, you'd want on sort of a normal living type soldier. You kind of imagine this weapon being rusty and dirty and not in very good condition. Once I was done with the uh, gun gray, I went in with Nuln Oil from Citadel and I applied a really heavy wash, particularly to the chainmail shirt. I really wanted to get dark and grimy and dirty. I'm also gonna apply sort of a lighter wash to the sword, but I'm gonna keep that thin and just kind of even. And that's more just to, again, to darken it slightly, but also to really help sort of unify the various colors a little bit. I then went back in with some pure uh, gun metal again, and I'm gonna, try to define sort of the cutting edge on the sword a little bit so that it's clear that that area is just shinier because it's getting more use even though the rest of the blade is dark. Uh, I also then took some Vallejo Air Steel which is even shinier and brighter and used that to further sort of make that particular area stand out. I actually went back on this work a little bit as you'll see in a minute but you know I think it's a good start. Now for the fun part, you know, you can't have a sort of a scary sort of undead skeleton warrior without really going to town, kind of distressing his equipment and making it look old and rusty and worn out. So what I've done here is I've taken that saddle brown color, which I used for the leather, and I have mixed it into some Agrix Earthshade wash. So I've got that really red tone, but it's got sort of that thinner wash consistency. But it is, again, probably heavier than just Agrax Earthshade by itself. And what I'm going to be doing here, as you can see, is I'm using it to make the chainmail rusty. This coat paint is pretty transparent, so you can really apply it and kind of build it up. And I'm really focusing kind of on edges and around that hole in the middle. And I'm also going to be applying it to the blade, too, as you can see, making the grip rusty in various parts of the sword and just building it up in some areas more than others. And this is just really fun. And it's not something you really can do wrong either, which it makes it kind of a, a, just a more satisfying process. And then continued having fun with the rest, I grabbed some Vallejo Orange Brown now, which is just, as the name suggests, sort of a lighter orange color. I haven't uh, thinned that down with wash as much, so it goes on harder and uh, less diluted. And I'm going to be using the brush to apply lots of tiny little dots, kind of stipple on even more extreme rust uh, areas and just get more sort of color variation, which will make the whole thing look better. Uh, I'm spending a lot of time on the sword, particularly just trying to get a lot of different textures in there because I think that looks really nice. I'm also going to apply a bit of it, as you can see, onto the chain mail here, here and there where I want the rust to feel really strong and, you know, really like it's sort of a really prominent feature. 
After that, I went back in with uh, more of the pure Vallejo Air Steel, and I applied uh, really thin dots of it here and there to, that, to make it basically look like uh, the area had rusted, but then it sort of got abraded by something, and the rust had been knocked off. And then, you know, if that happens, you get sort of these really shiny metal areas uh, showing kind of in between here and there. And I mostly did that in areas where there were edges or anywhere where I thought it could be that that happened, where the rust got kind of flaked away. And so you see me doing a lot, particularly sort of along the edges of the uh, sword and a, really a lot on the blade. I end up actually just where the blade is going to be, end up sort of just stippling lots of that uh, steel color sort of so you can kind of look like the rust and the sort of the shiny steel are kind of you know competing for attention with each other in that area okay so here is my finished uh dungeons and dragons style i guess skeleton warrior uh as predicted i had a lot of fun painting this guy sort of initially when I started it was really frustrating because the sculpt was bad as I predicted and especially when you're starting out with a bad sculpt it's just annoying and you're like why can't this be better but as I progressed uh, I started to really have fun it started to get easier and I started to enjoy trying to figure out ways to improve it um, and of course I really did have to spend a lot of time on that skull particularly because the sculpting was really bad there and, the, and I was really pleased with how much I was able to sort of improve the look of it by, you know, just applying paint in a judicious fashion. Uh, I really struggled too with whether I wanted to put an emblem on the shield or not. Uh, I really went back and forth. I still could, but then I decided I just kind of liked leaving this in a very sort of neutral palette, just kind of as it was, kind of simple. I really liked how that worked. And besides which, with all those tears and rips on the surface of the shield, it would have made it difficult to paint an emblem, and I think that really looked nice. And I couldn't also really come up with anything that I wanted to put there that I thought would be really good, so I just left it as is, and I think it, the result is still very nice. And yeah, so th yeah, this is still not a great figure by any stretch of the imagination. There's only a certain amount you can do uh, to fix a badly sculpted figure. But I think this is a great improvement over, you know, how it looked initially. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Please share it. Uh, leave me comments with what you thought, of course. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't got a chance to do so already. So that's all for now, and I will see you next week.